Aloha. Found another cancer study. <laughs> um, this was in the news today. How scientists are treating best breast cancer using the immune system. And it was in Time Magazine. I pulled it up online, but there was also a note that says, this appears in the October 15th, 2018 issue of Time, written by Alice Park. And this is about, it's not necessarily a new study, um, but details are now coming out about it. Uh, with the two doctors that just won the Nobel Prize for, what is it? For, I know it's in here somewhere. It was Allison, um, James Allison and Tasuko Honjo. Uh, they did the work starting back in the 90s and they just won this year's Nobel Prize for the work, um, which is to have cancer cells attacked with. Um, how do you say it? The, um, the independently discovered different ways in which the immune system is blocked from attacking tumor cells. And so this is using our own cells. Oh, sorry, I'm hitting the microphone. I forgot that I had that on. <laughs> it's new. Um, so this is about how they're using immunology now to you know, they, they develop something for your own system to attack the cancer cells. And so this is really, really interesting. Um, and let's see, so it says a completely new way of fighting breast cancer, not solely with chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery, but by harnessing the power of your own immune system, which would be nice. Um, you know, if I hadn't had to go through all that radiation and chemo, yeah. And so, let's see. The immune system mounts the body's defense and offense against unwanted intrusions such as bacteria, viruses, and cancer cells. Cancer poses a tricky problem because malignant cells develop from normal cells that start to grow out of control. And the immune system is specifically programmed not to attack the body's own cells. So malignant cells are just our own cells, which our own body has said, you know, no, that's your cell, we're not gonna attack it. So now scientists are looking into ways to restrain that and for the, um, the immune system to recognize and destroy the tumor cells that develop. And so, let's see, the first of these immunotherapy drugs approved to treat cancer began in the labs of James Allison of MDM cancer, or MD Anderson Cancer Center and Dr. Tsusuku Hanju, Hanjo sorry, of Kyoto University in the 1990s. And um, they actually, they worked independently. They didn't um, co-author anything. Um, so, and that led to their Nobel Prize this year. And it also, it, because it led to a new class of drugs called checkpoint inhibitors that allow the immune system to see cancer cells as the disease-causing rogues they are <laughs> and attack them, drastically improving remission rates. In the past five years, the FDA has approved a dozen new cancer drugs and therapies that exploit the immune system. Why didn't I get one? I mean, I'm stage one. I was like, you know, I have, it seems like I was one of the easiest cancer patients there is, you know, I had the least amount of problems, really, I mean, if you think about it, you know, stage one, HR negative, blah, 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 blah. It's like one of the easiest can uh, easiest breast cancers. And I still had to go through all this crap. Why didn't I just get this? Probably because sure insurance doesn't cover it. 
I, I'm guessing there's nothing in here about insurance, but I'm guessing insurance doesn't cover crap like this. All cancer patients will likely receive immunotherapy in five years. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it will do somebody some good, and that's a good thing. Okay. Immunotherapy treatments are especially effective against lung cancer, skin cancer, and blood cancers like leukemia and lymphoma. But immune-based treatments have not been as successful or as plentiful for the most common cancers, such as colon, prostate, and especially breast cancer. And these are because um, Oh, how am I trying to say it? it, it I'll, I'll read more about it. It comes up in, later in the article. <gasps> um, of the more than 600,000 people who died of cancer in the U.S. in the past year, the vast majority of these types had solid cancers. Okay, that's what I was trying to think of, solid cancers. So colon, colon cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, those are solid cancers. That's where you get a lump. Um, when you have leukemia, lymphoma, skin cancer, those are more blood disorders. Um, or they're, you know, they're cell disorders. They're blood and skin, you know. So that's why the immune system can go back and attack them more easily than it can the lump. Okay, so then um, Dr. Robert Vonderheide director of the Abramson Cancer Center at the University of Pennsylvania. Most cancers fit into a category we call cold immunological tumors, meaning the tumor has the ability to either exclude the immune system or hide from it altogether. That kind of cancer isn't easily treated with current immunotherapies. So that would be breast cancer. Um, and then it says at least not yet because they're working on it. <laughs> Um, they're trying to find ways to stimulate the immune system to see tumors like breast cancer as hot rather than cold. And they're going back to learn from other diseases that we've treated, I don't want to say cured, but we've treated um, such as tuberculosis and HIV and look at how we've dealt with those drugs for potentially treating um, the, the cold cancers. Um, cold cancer? Yeah, cold cancer. <gasps> um, and then it says, oh, sorry, my nose has been running. Um, While chemotherapy and radiation in their current forms destroy immune cells along with malignant ones, modified formulas may be just enough to stimulate an inflammatory response that awakens the immune system to see the tumor cells. So what they're working on basically is like you might have one chemo, sorry, one chemo session, um, one or two radiation sessions, and that kind of like gets the the cancer cells going. Ooh, wait, ooh, they kind of pop out, and then you can hit them with the immune system um, stuff. But or yeah, because they kind of go inflammatory. You know, you know when you hit them with the chemo and the radiation. So rather than going four, six, eight chemotherapies and then doing four or six weeks every day of radiation, you're way cutting it down. And when you think about all the side effects, the side effects aren't of the cancer. The side effects are of the treatments. So that's a, a drastic cut. I mean, I mean, that's a drastic improvement in your life while you're going through cancer treatment. Um, so the woman that they interviewed for this article, Kathy James, she had, um, it started with a marble-sized lump in her left breast and um, it turned out to be metastatic breast cancer. And so 
she went through this, you know, she, this was back in 2017 and she was in the test to do this. Um, let's see, where was I on here? And so with her, um, she said because her cancer tends to recur and because it's aggressive, she couldn't just stop, you know, like do one year of treatment, you know, do the one round of treatment, take some pills for a year or two, and then she would be done. Um, you know, she had to keep watching, keep going. But with the um, immunotherapy treatment, she didn't have to do as much. And um, her, her cancer is, what did they call it? They called it something strange that I had never heard. Um, Now I can't find it, but it's like some kind of remission and I'd never heard of it termed this way. Um, but it, she is in remission. And so, you know, for somebody who has a more severe cancer, you know, metastatic, that's, I keep hitting the microphone. I'm getting, it's going to be interesting to see what that sounds like once I get this, you know, once I play this back. Um, so then, and I'll have this link down below so you can read the whole article because obviously I'm skipping whole sections of it. Um, okay, so solid cancers like breast cancer are more common but they have fewer mu mutations and the tissues they invade, such as in the breast, can't be replaced like blood cells. So, you know, once you destroy a blood cell, it recreates itself. You know, the, the blood goes, oh, hey, you know, we lost somebody, let's make more. Um, but breast tissue doesn't do that. You remove breast tissue, you've got a hole in your breast. And so, um, let's see. Breast cancers fell in at the bottom 25% of tumors when it came to how many mutations they carried. I don't really, I, I, I don't know exactly, but, um, but because of that, breast cancers are also part of the bottom half of all cancers when it comes to immune responses the body generates against them. Breast cancer notoriously shields itself from the immune system, which is why it is one of the harder to treat with this new immune immunotherapy. Okay, now I'm going to quote directly through this whole thing because I found this, this whole couple of paragraphs were interesting. Okay, now Rosenberg, and Rosenberg is, let me go back, um, do, 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 to make sure that I am quoting the right person because I want to give credit where credit is due. Okay, Dr. Steven Rosenberg, the National Cancer Institute Chief of Surgery. Okay, so now Rosenberg is exploring ways to unlock breast cancer to the possibilities of immunotherapy. Building on his early work with T-cell responses to cancer, he designed an experimental therapy customized to each patient's cancer and tested it first in people with liver, colon, and cervical cancer. The first breast cancer patient in his study, Judy Perkins, had stage four cancer that had recurred and spread to lumps in her chest and to her liver despite a dozen chemotherapy and hormone treatments, treatments and even a mastectomy. Tapping into the growing knowledge of how genes drive cancer, Rosenberg did a thorough genetic analysis of her tumor and found 62 major mutations responsible for turning Perkins cells malignant. He then searched for the valiant few, uh, valiant, <laughs> valiant few immune cells that could recognize and attack four of those genetic aberrations and were already battling her cancer. He extracted those immune cells, grew them in larger numbers in the lab, and returned them to Perkins via IV 
um, IV, IV, you know, like <laughs> stick a needle in your arm, as an immune-based treatment against her breast cancer. Having exhausted all of her treatment options, Perkins had said her goodbyes to loved ones and was waiting for the end. <sighs> but within a month of receiving the one-time infusion of cells, she felt the tumor in her chest get softer and smaller. Within two months, the tennis ball size growth in her liver had disappeared and the tumor in her chest had also shriveled to nothing. Nearly three years later, doctor says she is in a durable regression. That was the phrase I was looking for, durable regression. I am totally thrilled. It's awesome, she says. But Perkins knows for now she's an exception. So far, only 14% of the 42 people Rosenberg has treated have responded as Perkins has. That's still 14%. Rosenberg believes that percentage will increase if he and others find better ways to pinpoint both the mutations behind each patient's cancer and the population of immune cells targeted against them. As that science evolves, it could bring immunotherapy to not just those with breast cancer, but those with other solid tumors as well. This could basically be a blueprint for the treatment of any cancer type, he says, and I frankly think that it's got a good chance of working. And I don't know why why they aren't doing more with this. Um, I had thought, honestly, when I was diagnosed and I was given the choice of whether or not to have the, I can't remember what it's called, when you, when they do the, uh, I can't even think of what it's called. Um, total blank. They, they do the screening on you to, that gives you the percentages of um, where you would fall in the chemotherapy range and I fell in midway, um, you know, there, because, you know, if, like if you fall at the far end, then they tell you you should have chemo. If you fall at the lighter end, they say you really don't need chemo and I fell right in the middle. And I honestly, I honestly thought that that all set little test chart thing that they did, I also thought part of that was to help pinpoint which treatment would be best for me. I thought they did genetic testing for that and apparently they do not. And so, you know, I've heard of the genetic testing, the genetic stuff before, um, but because I didn't have cancer and I wasn't way into all of this stuff, it just kind of went by me. And so now that I'm more invested in it, you know, it's sticking a little bit better. Um, but it's something to ask your doctor about if you're, di if you're freshly diagnosed, you know, ask about the immunotherapy. Um, okay, so. <sighs> I have to get over Perkins' story. Um, okay, so then it goes on and says that um, Rosenberg's method of immunotherapy is a one time, no, not one time, Ro Let me start over. Rosenberg's method of immunotherapy is a time-consuming and expensive treatment. The, there's the insurance question right there. And since it requires a customized approach, it can't be mass-produced, mass you know, can't be off the shelf for any patient who needs it. It has to be made specifically for you. Um, but there are other, there are, I'm, I've been thrown now. Um, there need to be other ways to tap into an immune response, which is why Cherniki, don't know if I'm saying that right, and he is, I saw his name back here in the area I didn't read, and Brian Chern Cherniki, Cherniki at Moffitt Cancer, can Moffitt Cancer, Center. Um, so Cherniki is testing possible vaccines and vaccines. 
in James's and other patients, in James and other patients that would search for and destroy cancer cells before they recur as tumors. Um, now, James's breast cancer, she's the first one, the first patient that I mentioned. She was HER2 positive. I'm HER2 negative, which is, I don't want to say more popular, but, you know, <gasps> I'm finally in a popular group. <laughs> um, it, it's a more common, HER2 negative is more common. Um, Let's see. Do 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 do. Chers Cherniki created a vaccine that stimulates stimulates that response again. Okay, I'm I skipped over something. Sorry. Okay, James's breast cancer is her two positive. Name for the protein that dominates her cancer cells. A protein that initially attracts an immune response, but then loses it over time. Cherniki created a vaccine that stimulates that response again. Okay, so um, then um, at, let's see, von der Heide is experimenting with ways to combine newer immunotherapy drugs with conventional treatments like chem um, chemotherapy and radiation with hope that the synergistic effect will make tumors more visible and vulnerable to immune attack. So basically what they're trying to do is um, where I said before, when you have chemotherapy and radiation and that like starts jiggling everything around and the malignant cells pop out and then they can whap them with the in immunotherapy. Um, so they would tweak the treatment so that they are just right for activating an immune response. Too much chemo or radiation suppresses the immune system, but just enough can act like a stimulant to activate it. Um, then there is Peter Schmidt, clinical director of the Breast Cancer Center at St. Bar Bartholomew Cancer Center in London. Um, Schmidt will announce much anticipated results at the end of October, stay tuned, for a study that combines a, a chemotherapy agent combined with a checkpoint inhibitor for treating advanced triple negative breast cancer, an aggressive, difficult to treat form of the disease. So when I hear about that, I'll come back. Um, the chemo is delivered in nanoparticle form, which makes it more soluble. Hmm. Nanoparticle. Sounds very Star Trek-y. Um, and which makes it more soluble and better equipped to slip inside cell membranes to activate an immune response. And let's see, then it goes on. There is similar excitement over combining shorter schedules of radiation with checkpoint inhibitors. Radiation messes you up that would be a good thing. This approach shows even more promise as a way to target tumors which have spread to hard to reach tissues, a common issue with breast cancer. I got lucky and mine was like right up, kind of up on top of the breast, but some of them are under, they're like an inside the rib cage, you know, they're at the back. <sighs> um, see, mine was like, mine was so easy, why? Why wasn't I given this? Um, so then they say radiation given over a few days rather than over the standard weeks long schedule may be enough to trigger an immune response against a specific tumor, which is then directed to attack tumor cells in other parts of the body. Boy, we don't need to kill every last tumor cell, but stir things up just enough for the immune system to take them out. Um, and that was from Allison, who is, he's the Nobel winner who first started this, James Allison. Um, oh, and then um, they go on to say that breast cancer patients could potentially be protected from having their cancer return with periodic anti-cancer booster shots. How about that? Think about all the cancer that could be avoided. People who get return cancer and just, you know, like a shot a year or something and 
instead of having to take a pill every day and maybe forgetting it or it giving you side of other side effects you know you get one shot a year and you're golden uh, uh, speaking of golden uh, I would like some company in being the golden guinea pig <laughs> Um, and that was Perkins, who had the, the metastatic cancer and was like saying goodbye. And <sighs> She says, I can't change the fact that I have breast cancer, but I can pay it forward by being part of a clinical trial in the hopes that there will be a vaccine my children and grandchildren will get so they wouldn't have to endure what I went through. Um, Perkins just wants her miraculous case to become the routine rather than the exception. The immune system has such potential and we are just starting to crack this door open, she says. I'm hoping that door will open all the way and we have more effective treatments. I would like some company in, I would like some company in being the golden guinea pig. So, and that was one thing when I was first diagnosed, I did go online looking for um, cancer studies and stuff, but you have to be in the local area and living in Hawaii, that's thus not feasible. Um, and unfortunately, there were none being conducted here. Uh, I think it's kind of rare that studies like that are done here. But, you know, it, that's another thing. If you can get into a study, if you don't mind being a guinea pig, if you want to see if you can get in on something new that may possibly be you know, make you the golden guinea pig, you know, then definitely search for those. I know that there are a couple of websites where you can search for medical studies, and um, I have those actually, and I'll try and remember to link those down below. Um, you just search, you can search by area, by disease, I'm not sure what all you can search by, but you know, if I remember to, I will link those in. And stay tuned for the next chapter in this that they said is coming up, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.